Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's turn, turn tragedy, tragedy to, to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate. Hey everyone, Mark Johnston here. Um, unfortunately, you know, Heather, um, who's normally on the podcast with me, she's not feeling well today, but I, I thought I'd go ahead and run through, uh, go ahead and run through this on my own today. So today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit just about a few things. And I, I, w- I wanted to know whether you feel like any, you know, if you've ever been in a situation where anything that you do it just seems like it's getting worse. Or if you feel like your relationship is spiraling out of control. Or, or whether you feel like the distance between you and your spouse just keeps growing bigger and bigger no matter what you do. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, how to stop all this and get to the point where healing is actually possible. So before we get into that, I want to go over our client win of the week. And this week, uh, I want to, you know, I just wanted to share a post from Kaylee. Now, Kaylee uh, has been making a ton of progress with with things. And she was, this week, she, um, I think it was a few days ago, she was sharing about some success with a family night. Um, So she just says, family night success. Um, Me and the hubs ended up chatting. um, And then she goes over in this list of all these things that are going well. Um, You know, how he is talking to her like normal and how he's really wanting to do more things together, how she was really able to be there and be supportive of him. Hey, Jennifer. (laughs) Um, How uh, Kaylee was, you know, how her husband was looking out for her while they were out on a walk, how, you know, just all sorts of little things which really demonstrate to me that her husband is feeling so much more comfortable and a, a, and attracted to her. Now, certainly there's still things to to um, do to, to really go the extra mile in the, the situation. This, uh, if any of you are familiar with Kaylee's situation, there's still more to do. But what I'm saying is this was an absolute win, and I'm glad that Kaylee was sharing this, because she has been working on this a long time. And this isn't a, wasn't a quick fix. Kaylee's done a lot of personal growth and development. But because of all that, uh, hi Jeff and Stacy. Uh, because of all that, she was able to get to this point right here, where her husband wants to be around her, is inviting her to do more things, is starting to lightly flirt with her, is really engaging with her on things. So, reason why I brought this up is, I always like applying the, the win to the topic of the week, and I know in Kaylee's situation. There had been a lot of arguments. There had been a lot of, um, you know, tense situations between the two of them. And because she's applied some of these principles, she's been able to cut off the pain and get it to a much better position. So, what's going on with, uh, what's <laughs> what kind of situation uh, are we talking about here? You know, when I'm trying to, when I'm talking about stopping the arguments, stopping a lot of the pain, Stopping the a growing rift between the um, you and your spouse, uh, you know why would you need or when would you need this, this sort of ceasefire method? Uh, you know, I want to first talk about maybe some of the problems you might be seeing very specifically. So you might be seeing a lot of volatile arguments, ones that really quickly escalate, and you know it gets to the point where people might be insulting, shouting, things like that. <laughs> Hi, Gloria. Oh, I'm glad to hear, Gloria's just saying that things are really going super. I'm glad to hear that, Gloria. Uh, so you might be seeing, you know, if you're needing this, you might be seeing a lot of blame. You might be seeing a lot of criticism or defensiveness or contempt, which, you know, I'm going to point out, many of these things are, um, be, are behaviors that, you know, John Gottman, a really uh, influential person in marriage research, says are some of the prime indicators that, uh, you know, if they don't stop, that it's going to... The relationship will lead to divorce. 
But if you're seeing these things like that contempt, that defensiveness, that criticism, the blame, the, the escalating arguments, uh, this is where you, we really want to cut those things off. It's really hard to heal, obviously, if there's ongoing pain um, happening. So these are things that you might be seeing, but I want to talk about actually what's more important, what's actually going on underneath all of this. Because, you know, yes, you're seeing the arguments and the criticism and the defensiveness. But if, you know, if I had you and your spouse here in front of me, if all I did was talk about arguments and how to stop arguments, it wouldn't really solve any problems. Something else would pop up. Really, um, so underneath all this, in my opinion, I think that each person, when you're seeing these things, is feeling a lack of, of you know one of several things or you know maybe more uh they're they're feeling either a lack of respect maybe they're feeling a lack of understanding uh maybe they're feeling a lack of consideration um and certainly certainly there is a lack of vulnerability within the relationship that where people aren't able to truly talk about what they feel is a concern uh, and they're probably likely not talking about their, you know, deep down some of the, some of their feelings. They don't. They're just there's an inability to share those things, which is problematic in this situation. I mean, it's going to be problematic anytime, but especially with this. Um. So when I see this going on. Uh, and if I have a couple in the same room, I almost always run through very similar, a very similar regiment, you know, um, because, you know, the fact is I see this sort of problem all the time with couples, especially when they are in crisis mode. So the regiment that I, you know, the things that I will typically run through is, uh, you know, I start the, the couple off with actually difficult conversations within um, you know, while they're with me. Uh, I help each person in this context to feel heard. I ask questions to help each person really explain themselves fully. I'm going to explain all this in a second. <laughs> I ask each partner to summarize the other person's uh, perspective positively. Um, and I'll typically assign journals to track thoughts and feelings around it, these interactions and to eventually to rewrite those thoughts into something more positive while also sharing some of the feelings with the partner. But the question then is, okay, what does all this accomplish? Why would I do these things? You know, certainly, yeah, I guess on the surface, it makes sense to walk through things and help there to be uh, some better understanding, help see things from the other person's perspective. Uh, but I want to point something out. You know, if they, the problem within the relationship is that lack of respect and understanding and consideration and vulnerability... The solution then is to provide those things. Uh, it's it's to provide that understanding and that respect and so many, so many other things. You know, uh, so many of these other good things. So I want to talk about this in a practical setting because it, it's one thing to talk about this, and you know, if you're having a session with a professional, it's a completely different thing. <laughs> Hi, April. It's a completely different thing to, um, you know, put this into practice in, in your own marriage. Now, I, I'm i the first one to, to tell people, uh, you know, my marriage, honestly, you know, it's, it's good. It's great. I love my wife to death. Uh, but my wife, Jen and I, we are hard, hardly perfect um, in things. And we do have our arguments. We do have um, our moments where... <laughs> We're not at our best, you know, and there are times when I, you know, either my wife Jen or I feel like any attempt at, at approaching the relationship is met with some some resistance. Now, Jen and I are always able to get over this and repair this. Uh, if you remember Jen on from a couple weeks ago, uh, this was, we, we described this, this was a bit of our superpower that we're always able to repair things, but... When we are in this situation, <laughs> you guys will 
This is the joys of working in a home office. You might hear my doorbell in the back from there. Uh, so when I am approaching this with Jen, you know, and I myself am angry, the great thing about Jen and I is I'm always able, you know, either Jen or I are always able to get to the point where we can say, okay, if we want to get going forward here, I'm going to have to fix this myself. I'm going to have to approach my my husband, my wife, um, with some understanding. And so even though, even if I'm the one that's been hurt, you know, I always approach this with the perspective of trying to see where my wife is having a problem with this, where she might not be feeling understood, where she might not be feeling considered. Um, and after I, I'm able to do that, I'm, you know, the nature of my relationship with Jen, we're always able to, um, I'm always able to then ask for some of that understanding in return. Now, in much more um, contentious relationships, this might look very differently. It might be a situation where you need to demand some some boundaries or demand some respect. Um, but always, 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 those sort of things go off, go come across much better if you are starting exactly with what is missing. If you are uh, providing what they're looking for. Uh, now, April, you're saying we're, we're talking every day goes between aggressive to fun then back. And how do I help him with this current struggle without thinking I'm starting a fight? Uh, in April, I want to, I want to bring, I love your comment here. And I actually want to bring this back into that practical sense. Like what can you do practically? So if we're talking about in these situations where things that are missing are respect and understanding consideration, but also vulnerability. I think that's where you start with that. Um, April is expressing some struggle here about wanting to support her husband, but also not coming across as, you know, trying to start a fight, trying to instigate anything. And this is why I actually specifically included that last little bit there of what needs to be included. It's that vulnerability is it is, I think, perfectly acceptable, not, not just perfectly acceptable, highly recommended by me that you share your struggles in approaching the situation in a in a manner that's not blaming or condescending or judgmental uh, i will often tell my clients uh, in these cases it you know problems are much they <laughs> you can come across talking about problems much easier if you're completely if you're using those cliche i statements uh, or if you're talking about problems completely from just your perspective and what's going on and uh, on your end. Uh, another thing, you know, I, I, I love um, Brene Brown's advice on something like this. Um, Brene Brown, by the way, is an ex excellent in terms of teaching about vulnerability. So if you haven't already listened to talks on her, I would highly recommend it. But Brene Brown, when she's talking about sharing vulnerability like this, uh, she talks about having gotten into the habit of this one phrase right here, uh, you know, when talking to her husband, she says, the story that I'm telling myself is this, you know, inviting some discussion about it and the possibility that it might be wrong. But basically what I'm getting at, you know, tying this all together, it is, it does come down to those four things, the, you know, that respect, that understanding, that consideration, that vulnerability. Um, and if you can present those things to your spouse, it really takes the <laughs> it takes the ire out of things. It takes the really it takes away that anger uh, quite a bit in many cases. Uh, certainly, there are, I could get into you know half a dozen other methods of really um, scaling things down into de-escalating arguments. It really depends on the situation uh, whether the the rift is that's between you is really about stonewalling and silence whether it's about really nasty arguments, um, whether there is like almost like this cold anger going, you might approach it differently depending on what's going on. Uh, and this is, you know, um, obviously partly why we run services, uh, you know, individual sessions and group sessions and whatnot. So we can um, help diagnose your individual situation. 
Now, Josh brings up a fair point here as well. He says, my wife won't be vulnerable with me. Since I chose not to, to move out, she's gotten very nasty. Cannot moving out be a mistake? Uh, and I'm going to point out to Josh right there where this is coming from. It comes back to those four things. His wife does not feel like she's being respected, understood, or considered. And this is why she's getting very nasty. It's, and it's not necessarily, we can't force other people to be vulnerable, but this is why I'm saying, if you can offer these things to your partner, it can usually really heal um, uh, the situation. Now, as to whether Josh actually moves out or not, I think a lot can be accomplished just by himself being vulnerable and sharing, you know, deep down what it would mean to him to move out. And if he can then on top of that, really demonstrate that respect and consideration, that understanding towards his wife, it's going to go do a lot there. Uh, and I'm, I'm just reading through comments because a lot, I, I love your comments here because a lot of this is very applicable to what's going on. And it's saying vulnerability doesn't work with my husband. He protects himself so much that he gets blind and unempathetic with me getting hurt. And you might, you know, I, I'm going to point out, I still think that vulnerability is necessary. But I'm going to give the caveat here that you do need to protect yourself. Vulnerability with, you know, setting boundaries, making sure that you're demanding respect. Um, there are times when with my wife um, that I need to be very explicit and say, I'm going to share something here. It might be difficult to hear, but I really need you to listen, and I need you to to take some time to to understand me. Um, and I might, you know, if I really, if my wife maybe is in a mood, which ninety nine percent of the, actually, I can't think of the last time if I had said something like that, she she would react for it a bit. If that's your spouse, and they say, you know, I can't do that right now. Okay, well then. I would love to fix this. I would love to really show some understanding towards you. But I think part of this would be, you know, help if I can share these things. If you can't be there right now, let's come back to this another time when we can. So there, I, I'm noticing the theme here with everyone's comments is you're saying I'm struggling, um, especially with that last bit that either my spouse being vulnerable or accepting my vulnerability. And there's so many variations on that. You know, I think we, it would be difficult to, to address all of them here. But I, I am going to say that for this to be a healthy situation, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not, it's not a struggle, but for this to be a healthy situation, that vulnerability does need to be there uh, on some level. You know, it, ideally going both ways. And, you know, ideally that respect going both ways. So if you need to demand that from your spouse, um, you know, there's ways to do that uh, in a healthy manner. If you need to, to be that vulnerable person yourself, look different in many situations. But I think the uh, guiding principles are... Oh, <laughs> lost connection there just for a second. Uh, so on to our marriage myth buster for today. Uh, the marriage myth buster is if we have a setback, it's over. And, you know, I, I want to kind of ex give some explanation for this in, in some ways. So, you know, I, I will hear this sometimes in, um, in couples trying to repair things or couples that have been struggling with a specific problem. You know, I'm thinking specifically of, you know, I, I could think of, you know, a dozen couples off the top of my head where they say, okay, I'm going to try these things. And then there's a big blow up, a big freak out because there's some reminder of past behavior. Um, you know, in addiction terms, this would be, you know, a relapse or just in general, you know, setbacks in general are generally seen very negatively or if you have problems in general, seen very negatively. I think the truth here is in how you look at it. And I, I believe that setbacks are ways to show us how we can grow. I now I, I've sometimes mentioned that I, a long time ago that you know I wasn't a, I wasn't a therapist in, in this uh, setting, but I, I did used to work at a, a rehab center, and I did work with the the patients directly in, in some manners. I ran some classes and whatnot. 
Um, and a lot, I remember a lot of the uh, patients there, they would have this mentality that, um, and even their, their family would have this mentality, if, if I have a relapse, if I have a setback, if I struggle with this, what's the point? It's, it's, it's over. And the way we worked through those situations was interesting. It really taught me a lot um, about even personal growth, about acceptance for myself. Uh, when we were talking with the, these, these patients here, one of the big things that we stress was, you know, examining these set, setbacks and seeing what we can learn from them. See how, how we needed to further adjust things, see where we needed to shore up and strengthen um, areas of our of our lives I and I loved this lesson because you know I myself have had some very major personal struggles and, and setbacks um, you know I myself have uh, dealt with some you know I don't, sometimes I'm hesitant to share these things but you know I always think it's it's important here if that I that I be vulnerable with all of you. So I, I myself have struggled with some addictive behaviors um, in my life. I, this got to a point where uh, early early on in my marriage that uh, there was recommendations to, uh, given to my wife that she should just divorce me. She should just put me aside. No, luckily she she did not, um, and we. We worked through things. Now, I would say that we, we can look back on this and I could be very ashamed of, of what's happened, of the pain maybe that I caused or the mistakes that I made, but that doesn't really help me at all. Um, further on, it doesn't really, you know, if my wife had similar views that, you know, the mistakes of, of mine were really um, really hurtful, really problematic that things were over. It wouldn't, wouldn't help her either. I want to talk to you about some of the things that I have learned from my own struggles and setbacks. Um, you know, I, I learned to be very patient with problems. I learned to find love and acceptance for myself, something that I was missing for a long time. I learned how to really understand others and their struggles. Um, my wife learned very similar lessons to be to have that patience, to have that love and understanding for someone. Because the, the truth is, oh, pretty much everyone, no, not pretty much everyone, just everyone has their own struggles and setbacks in life. And it becomes very easy to judge others for their own personal struggles and setbacks while missing the point, missing, um, missing our own. But I'm going to say, you know, because of these lessons that I learned, it's made me very effective with helping other people. It's made me much more understanding and empathic, um, you know, towards people who have honestly, uh, you know, not been very kind to myself or my family. But ultimately, because of that, you know, I was able to work through many tough situations. It's also made me a much better father and husband because, you know, like I said, no one's perfect. And I've been able to look at my own wife's struggles and setbacks with a lot of kindness and patience. So in my opinion, problems can be, setbacks can be sinkholes or they can be springboards. And, you know, the big difference, you know, what makes the difference between a setback being a springboard or sinkhole? is how you choose to look at it and how you choose to approach it. So I know many of you out there are looking at your own relationship and maybe your spouse has seen that you've had too many setbacks. They're not being understanding. They're not choosing to look at your setbacks as these springboards. Uh, that doesn't mean that you yourself need to be swayed by their view. And if anything, this is an opportunity for you to learn how to do something a little bit differently, for you to grow from this, and to, for you to demonstrate that this time it, your setback has been a springboard to something better. Uh, when, like I said, it's all in how you choose 
to look at the, the setbacks, the problems, the relapses. So, if you are struggling with setbacks, if you are struggling with a volatile and rough interactions with your spouse, if you can't seem to get that ceasefire going where you stop the arguments or the pain, um, you're really struggling with that, I highly recommend that you reach out to us. Uh, we do have our free breakthrough calls. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. We do have our free breakthrough calls um, to see if you are a good fit for our program, to see if this is um, you know, something that would, could work for you. So if you're struggling, reach out, go over to highthrivecoaching.com slash apply, see, you know, see if we can help you out. So next week, uh, we're going to share with you how to restore peace in your marriage so that you can have peace and love again. Uh, I'm just going to read off these last couple comments. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't just let it go. I would normally just sign off right here. But Matt saying, I, I bought Connection Reboot last Thursday. Can't access it. I've emailed every day since and no one, okay. Hey, Matt, I'm going to reach out to you directly uh, and see what's going on after this. So, uh, Crystal, thanks for those kind words. Um, I'll, I'll message you in just a moment. Look for my message. I'll finish that up, uh, figure that out with you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week in the next podcast. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on.